Diabolical Tales. story of dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Diabolical Tales. Many of the incidents in the story you are about to hear are based on the actual experiences and authentic records of FBI agent Cooper who recently joined a highly classified government investigation regarding the men from within the Earth. Here is our star, Brian Bedell, as Agent Cooper. My name is Cooper, Agent Cooper, FBI. ID number 12A1081. I work on an above top secret investigation called Project Agartha, and this is my story. In a moment, listen for Agent Cooper, G-Man of the FBI. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hi there, I'm Jack Ferguson. Tonight's episode hasn't started yet, because right now I'm here to tell you about Caffeinol brand coffee. It's blended special, vacuum-packed, and valley-grown for superior flavor. It's the only brand of coffee that I drink when I'm recording in the studio. It's what I've got in my cup right now. Mmm, that's a good stuff. And Caffinol is the only coffee that Operative 132 and Agent Cooper drink when they're out on assignment. So don't forget to tell your wife or girlfriend to pick up a can of Caffinol at your local grocery store. Caffinol brand coffee. It'll get your engine running. And don't forget to try the new Lumberjack Roast. And now, Diabolical Tales. This above top secret report from Project Agartha is marked, it came from within the earth. The date was Thursday, August 20th, 1953. I was temporarily in charge of Project Agartha because my partner, NSA Operative 132, had been called away to assist with some kind of top-secret recovery effort in Nevada. It was above my security clearance. That's all I knew. Meanwhile, there had not been much to report on. It had been exactly two months since O-132's last encounter with the mysterious man in black named Xanth, and we'd not been able to find any trace of him since. So I had been doing a lot of rereading the older Project Agartha reports. At least, the ones I was cleared to read. I was still only SC4, and there are a handful of reports that are listed SC5 or SC6 only. So, I only got to read some of the official reports. <sighs> I'm grateful and honored to be working on this important above top secret project. But I also wish O-132 would just tell me everything. I feel like my skills are not being taken advantage of. And then, I heard a knock at my office door. Agent Cooper. Assistant Director Smith. What a surprise. What can I do for you? FBI Assistant Director Smith used to be my boss before I joined Project Agartha. After an encounter with a man from within the Earth named Zong left me unconscious and my partner, Agent Thompson, vaporized, Assistant Director Smith tried to reassign me, but O-132 got me on Project Agartha. The Assistant Director had been acting strange ever since. I've got some news from the Chicago outfit. The Chicago outfit? Yeah, you know. The mob. When you used to do real FBI work. Real FBI work, he says. In reality, it was usually just boring stakeouts. In fact, my last regular job for the FBI had been trailing Frank Sinatra for his suspected ties to gangster Sam Giancana. As you could guess, it went nowhere. 
What's the news? We've got indications that Giancana is about to make a move against Ricardo to control the whole outfit. Mr. Hoover and I would really like you back on my detail, so you can trail them. Move into action if they make a hit. It's the kind of assignment I used to dream about landing. But that was before. Before Project Agartha. Assistant Director Smith, I sincerely appreciate the offer, but I can't leave my current assignment. Uh Uh-huh. Can I ask you a question? What's that? Back in January, during the Robertson panel meetings, there was some big guy who made an assassination attempt on Operative 132. Remember? I do. It was the day of the train wreck at Union Station. Right before that happened, you said you were there to provide Operative 132's security. Now, how did you know there was going to be a hit? Um, I'm sorry, Assistant Director, but that's classified. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I also found it troubling that you were investigating my old friend, James Moore, the CEO of Amalgamated Technologies, a few months ago. What could he possibly have to do with your crazy assignment? We weren't investigating him, sir. Just asking some questions. I have a higher security clearance than you, Cooper. Come on, come clean. I've pretty much said all that I can, Assistant Director. Well, I could offer you some information in return. I happen to know you're looking for a suspect who works within the U.S. government. A suspect who has been leaking information to your enemies. Oh yeah? What can you tell me about him? (laughs) This information isn't free, Agent Cooper. First you. This was all very confusing. How could Assistant Director Smith know we were looking for someone within the government? Come on. Hmm. I can tell you that we're not really interested in James Moore, CEO of Amalgamated Technologies. Only in the sightings that had been reported there. Sightings? Of what? More of your man in black capes, hocus pocus? I'm afraid I can't reveal that much, Assistant Director. Now you. Oh. You must understand, I'm only concerned because I wouldn't want my old war buddy James Moore or his company to get caught up in something that they're not guilty of. So, I guess I can tell you. We don't know the name of the enemy mole, so we've been calling him Suspect Ivan. We know he works in the Office of Naval Intelligence, has access to lots of above-top secret information, and... He attended the Robertson panel meetings back in January. So it seems he may be your man. Just the breakthrough we've been searching for. Well, thanks for the tip, Assistant Director Smith. It could be just the breakthrough we've been searching for. Same to you, Agent Cooper. See? There's no reason for us to work against each other. We're on the same team. I spent the next couple of hours making notes for 0132. But then I realized I had promised my wife Kate a night out of the house. So I finished up my notes, drove home and picked her up. And then we went out to the movies. Oh, there it is right there. See? Titanic! Starring Barbara Stanwyck and Clifton Webb. And it came from outer space. Starring... I don't know who. No science fiction! Titanic is a true story! Isn't that a remake? I get enough true stories at work. Let's see it came from outer space. It's 3D. 3D? You mean we have to wear the glasses? Yeah, you'll love it. Besides, you already know how Titanic is going to end. Oh, all right. I'll bet it's stupid. Two for it came from outer space, please. Uh, that's 90 cents, please. Uh, no, just two tickets, please. Yeah, that's 90 cents. 90 cents for two? Since when did going to the movies get so expensive? And it got even more expensive at the concessions booth. Another quarter gone for popcorn and drinks. And we headed into the theater. We took our seats and Kate immediately pulled out her little flask of vodka, unscrewed it, and took a shot. You want a drink, honey? Kate, why did you bring that? It's our movie night. Whoever said we couldn't live a little? 
She took another slug and pushed the flask to me. When's the last time you had a drink, Agent Cooper? Well, Kate, you know it was our wedding night. Over three years ago? Give me that thing. She grabbed back the flask, took another hit, and then handed it back to me. Three years of you being an uptight FBI man. Time to live a little. While I didn't really want to, I realized she was right. We rarely got spontaneous, so I took a few slugs myself. (coughs) 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 Ah, But I wish she had some whiskey instead. Wait, I'm putting these glasses on. Oh, wow, it's blue and red. Wow, it sure is. So blue and red make 3D? Oh, wow, everything looks really weird. I don't think we put them on yet, Kate. And wouldn't you know it, some numbskulls a few rows back started talking as soon as the movie got going. I was just about to turn around to say something when one of their words caught my ear. These guys weren't here to watch a movie. They were men from within the earth just a few rows back behind me. I quietly pulled my 38 from my holster and kept it at the ready. Why were they here? To kill me? Maybe they already got O-132. And Kate. I couldn't put her in danger. I couldn't move with her here. I'm going to take off these blinders. I want to know if I can still see. You should. That's why I selected this location. Why? Because it's dark in here? And why are these images in black and white? It's like a double image. Are they daft? Perhaps that is how the surface dwellers choose to see the world. Maybe they're just colorblind and dumb. Have we ever done a study on that? Do I even sound like the surface dweller? It's uncanny how similar you sound to him. I should, after all the surgery. Then try being subjected to months and months of a gradually blinding light for 12 hours a day. You are not the first. Nor the last. I know. There's a hundred more in training now, and they'll all be coming up at the same time. It's a historic time to be alive. All right, all right. I'm gonna take off these blinders. Then do it, already, Zuzax. I can still see, Xanth. I'm on the surface, and I'm not wearing blinders. <laughs> Suddenly, I felt Kate angrily stand up from her seat. She turned around and faced the two men from within the earth. Be quiet, you men. My husband here is an FBI agent, and he'll kick both of your butts. Oh, no. No, Kate, no. We'll be back with Agent Cooper in Diabolical Tales after a word from our sponsor. playing at the Maralta Theater through September 26th, Blue Jungle of Borneo, in Cinemascope, the modern miracle you see without glasses, Blue Jungle of Borneo, starring Clyde Mace, Elaine Peabody, and Van Heflin. Watch as a rugged adventurer following the trade winds of the Pacific gets tangled up with a spunky girl next door from Hoboken, New Jersey. Are you some kind of stowaway? Who said anything about a stowaway? Island adventures, native cannibals, pagan love rituals. I'd like a martini, please. We're in the jungle, sister. The jungle. Well, I'd still like a martini. See Blue Jungle of Borneo in Technicolor and Cinemascope. Now playing at the Maralta Theater through September 26th. And now, we're back with Brian Bedell as Agent Cooper in Diabolical Tales, Project Dagartha. There 
I was. In a movie theater watching It Came From Outer Space with my wife, when she drunkenly started shouting at two very loud men from within the earth, sitting just a few rows behind us. Did you hear me? Shut up, stupid men! She started to stumble backwards, and I helped her regain her balance. That's when I realized she was pretty drunk. Kate, are you okay? I'll be back. I have to go to the ladies' room. And they better be quiet by the time I get back. A ship? What kind of ship? Kate staggered off, and I glanced over my shoulder. The two men were standing and walking off in the opposite direction, toward the side exit of the theater. They glanced back at us as they opened the door, and I could make out the silhouette of a round-looking man and a tall, big guy. I recognized the big guy as Xanth. The chubby one must have been Zuzax. I didn't want to leave Kate here, but this was my only chance. I climbed up out of my seat and quickly made my way to the same exit. I looked around in all directions. Then I spotted them, about two blocks down, headed west. I didn't want to draw too much attention, so I broke into a light run. I trailed them for about a half mile and ended up near the Amalgamated Technologies building. 0132 was right. We were on to something with Amalgamated Technologies. Somewhere around the perimeter of the corporate grounds, I lost them. There was a lot of places where they could have turned off. I figured I'd look around for a bit longer. I was passing by the front entrance when someone came walking out the door. I recognized him from our meeting a few months back. James Moore, CEO of Amalgamated Technologies. He was carrying two briefcases, both with one hand. And he noticed me too. Agent Cooper! Mr. Moore. What are you doing here this time of night? Are there some communists or liberals lurking about? You never know, Mr. Moore. That's why I'm taking a look around. It's a measure of national defense. That a boy, Agent Cooper. You have a good night. Good night, sir. I watched James Moore, CEO, walk down the block and around a corner. More than ten minutes had passed since I lost Xanth and his partner Zuzax, and now I was starting to worry that I shouldn't have let Mr. Moore walk off with those two sinister beings wandering around. So I decided to find him. I turned and looked in the opposite direction to see him. Moore James. He was behind me, apparently walking by the front of the Amalgamated Technologies building. How did he double back without me seeing him? I started after him. Moore James! He turned as I approached and frowned in confusion. What? What is this? It's nothing, sir. I just wanted to make sure you were safe. Turns out there are some... communists running around tonight. Oh, I see. Aren't you Operative 132's little sidekick? Little sidekick? I was just talking to him less than two minutes ago, and he wasn't carrying his two briefcases this time. What is this? I'm Agent Cooper. You don't remember talking to me a few minutes ago? Uh, Of course, uh, of course I remember talking to you uh, a few minutes ago. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. That sounded like trouble. It was in the direction that I saw James Moore walking the first time. Mr. Moore, excuse me. Uh, of course. I ran off in the direction of the sounds. What was going on here? I barreled around the corner to find a charred and smoldering patch on the ground. I raised my gun in all directions, scanning for the men in black. But there was no trace of them. I looked down at the burn mark on the pavement. There were no clues as to who it could have been. Some poor, unidentified soul met their maker here. And then I remembered... Kate! (laughs) 
I made my way back to the movie theater, and I found Kate right where I'd hoped to, passed out sound asleep in her seat. She'd only eaten half the popcorn, and it looked like the movie was about to begin again. So I sat back in my seat and wondered. How did James Moore CEO double back around so quickly? Why was he acting so oddly as if he didn't know me? And who was the victim of their fancy advanced weapons attack? And just what were those men in black talking about? So many questions. And probably I don't even have the proper security clearance to get the answers anyway. As it turned out, I had some activity during my temporary charge as head of Project Agartha. First, the new tip from Assistant Director Smith about this suspect Ivan, who may be Zadja, and now this strange encounter with Xanth and his friend Zuzax. I'll have to write a report and get the feedback of my partner 0132 when he returns from his special assignment. Until then, I just hope those men from within the Earth don't run into my wife again. This is Brian Bedell. Some of the stories we bring you are so strange and fantastic that it's hard to believe that it really happened. For obvious reasons, most of the names, dates, and localities have been changed. But our stories are based on the real-life experiences of Agent Cooper, FBI. And they did happen here. We hope you'll join us again next time for another adventure. Until then, remember, folks, the men from within the Earth are among us. This episode of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour starred Brian Bedell, Kyle Stroud, Stuart Moyer, John Kissinger, Dana Stearns, Joe Dury, Laura Stearns, Jack Ferguson, Brandon Kane, and Kat Peterson as Kate Cooper. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese. The mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios. It was written by Brandon Kane and produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Guerin, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions. Hi, I'm Kat Peterson, and I play Kate Cooper on Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. While our show is a lot of fun to create, each episode costs time and money to produce. So, if you liked what you heard... Please subscribe to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour on your preferred medium in order to catch new episodes as they're released. And if you're able, please consider donating to our show at patreon.com slash diabolicaltales. Patrons help us continue to produce the show and also get access to bonus materials and additional content. And don't forget, you can also find us at diabolicaltales.com. So from all of us, thank you for listening to the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour. 